Hi, I'm Florina Cezani, a clinical psychologist. We're talking mental health and our focus is going to be depression because depression is the most common form of mental illness and depression and anxiety most of the time we say that now there's comorbidity meaning that they can even happen at the same time there are people who who, who presents with a uh, depressive symptoms with anxiety and sometimes you can have anxiety that can even cause depression especially now when that anxiety is unresolved that is why now we're saying that now there's comorbidity so that is why it's very important to pay attention or to address your mental health needs and there are various forms of depression and sometimes people will just say when maybe they are feeling like blue like i'm not in the mood and then they like it's depression but here now we're speaking of clinical depression when you are clinically depressed it's not like when you kind of like just having that one day bad day and then you'll hear people saying that you i'm feeling depressed today and here now we're talking about depression now as a mental illness and people present with various symptoms and most of the time it's when you there's that sadness the chronic sadness we do feel sad sometimes when there are issues that are happening in our lives and we're able to resolve that we able to move on but with depression you'll find that now a person will present with this persistent sadness it does not go away and sometimes the person will say i really don't know what is the cause today but i'm always feeling sad others are feeling irritable even at little things meaning that now there's also that change in behavior like a person maybe was sociable friendly all of a sudden now there's this a uh, irritability mood mood is low and people will be like i'm feeling down others are even struggling to wake up or you even struggling to fall asleep or sometimes you you fall asleep but you wake up at night remember it's when now it's persistent others maybe it will be more than two weeks or more than a month because what we do now for us duration of the symptoms is very important that is why now we'll ask you how long have you been experiencing these symptoms because now that also helps us with diagnosis because there's there are various forms of a uh, depression other people will lose interest like things that you used to do you no longer doing them maybe you used to watch tv other people maybe you are a sporty person all of a sudden you're losing interest or in your studies or maybe attending to important matters it might be family issues all of a sudden you you're not interested and sometimes you even have a challenge in making decisions there are things maybe that now you need to decide on and you kind of like you procrastinating because there's also low energy you keep on saying that i'll do that and the person will be like you know i couldn't do it and sometimes if we don't know we'll just think that now this is just mere procrastination only to find out that now a person is presenting with depressive uh, symptoms and there's also poor concentration there's forgetfulness because there's chemical imbalance now in your brain you cannot concentrate even things like especially when it's happening often like you don't even know where your car keys are most of the time remember we do sometimes not know where did i put my phone where did i put my car keys or maybe forgetting to lock sometimes it happens here now it's when things now are happening more often and sometimes people closer to you are even aware that there's some changes now in your behavior you are no longer like a uh, before and even this change of appetite you're not eating uh, very well 
you sometimes you're skipping your meals and others have suicidal feelings like uh, suicidal thoughts others it has a uh, like you have a plan we will even ask you like what is your plan because we are assessing severity of the symptoms that a person will say i'm planning to kill myself doing this and that others is just an ideation it's just a thought where like they are like i feel like I, 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 like I, I, I must not leave sometimes it's feelings of hopelessness where there are even others feeling empty especially when it's the atypical symptoms we call them atypical symptoms like the unusual symptoms of depression when they are atypical you'll find that now a person is sleeping more because most of the time we used to i'm sleeping less i'm waking up uh, at night or I, I struggle to fall asleep but with atypical symptoms we'll find that now a person is sleeping for longer hours others are even eating more there's gain of weight but with the typical symptoms a person will even lose weight because now they are eating less so that is why now uh, uh, people are presenting with uh, various symptoms and now we we probe because now we also depend now on history how long have you been experiencing these symptoms is it a month is it maybe a year and most of the time women present with persistent depression where now it's kind of like dysthymia like they are feeling like this for many years it's not like they are not functioning but you are low functioning you're still going to work but everything is a drag you're dragging yourself and you can't even uh, you, you you are not productive at work even with your family others they just maybe you just put your bag there and go and sleep you kind of like lose interest others are used to going to church they are not, they are no longer participating maybe in church activities or whether it's community activities you kind of like you losing interest it is then that now you will also diagnose you now as depression most of the time we'll say that now this is a mdd major depressive a uh, disorder and most of the time it's not chronic with other people when it's mdd is chronic they are on medication for long term and others are not on medication you can resolve it by coming for like when we say it's talk therapy you coming to the psychologist we're talking about issues that are depressing you sometimes it's issues that happened in your past and you're still staying there you're not resolving them and they are resurfacing sometimes they, they are triggered by the current situation what is happening in your life now so it can trigger depression like especially with people with chronic depression then we'll say that now there's a it's a it's a relapse and the other form now that is bipolar depression where now we say it's bi because it means now it's two it's kind of like you kind of like oscillating between the emotions where now sometimes you're feeling sad you kind of like you're at your low or you add your high where now there's a lot of energy a person presenting with a lot of energy they are kind of like sometimes they feel like you know they can conquer the world it's extreme energy where it's worrying we do feel energetic but now when it's worrying and a person will like not resting others can even clean at night the entire house others can maybe study non-stop even lifestyle changes others they can even party a lot they are kind of like in a happy mood but it's a happy mood that is kind of like even creating discomfort in people around because we do feel happy sometimes when we feel like hey things are going well but here now it's where you like something is not right others can even get themselves involved in risky behavior especially when they are when they are high it's a, like a, where they can even even abuse alcohol like drinking excessively or it's substance abuse others is even risky sexual activities unprotected se uh, sex 
sex with multiple partners is kind of like endangering their lives. And sometimes now they kind of like run out of energy because remember this is by it means it's true. You kind of like now oscillating on these emotions and then now you are kind of like on your low. They do get uh, like depressed like now when kind of like the calf now is kind of like getting flattened. They no longer have energy now. They are getting depressed and they present with the symptoms that I've mentioned before. The ones of sadness and sometimes they are even uh, prone to suicide. Others will say it's successful suicide like in terms of they carry it through and they succeed in killing themselves especially the ones who cannot access help that is why now we also need to help them remember sometimes they kind of like they are not in touch with reality that's why it's very important that now we help them others get medi uh, hospitalized and there's also medication involved because there's mood swings they are happy, they are unhappy, they cry. There's kind of like that labile uh, mood. So that is why it's very important that now we become their social support and then we take them now for help. And especially with bipolar, they are on medication for a very long time. Others can get aggressive, but it's not all people suffering with bipolar that now can get aggressive and hostile we even now psychoeducate them on medication because sometimes taking medication it's tiring but we do encourage them because they need to function when they are not on medication they cannot uh, function others when they are studying they are even now failing their courses others at work they are no longer performing because now it's kind of like it's like a it's like a wave so that is why it's very important that now we uh, we help them because now sometimes it's kind of like day to day, it's very difficult and it's also very important also not to label them because most of the time now what we do, we give them labels, you crazy, you like this and it kills their sense of, of, of worth. They kind of like feel worthless because now we're putting all those labels on them. We're even stereotyping them, even at work, even at our homes. So it's very important that now we become their, their support because it's very easy now to relapse, especially now when they are feeling uh, rejected. So others, it will be what we call it's seasonal depression. It does not last for long and it's sometimes it's called seasonal affective disorder. Like maybe it's winter. There are people who kind of like get depressed when it's winter. That is why I will say it's seasonal. You see there's a change in their mood. They are no longer functioning like before. Personal functioning is impaired. Occupational functioning is impaired. If they are studying, academic functioning is impaired. And that is why we say it's seasonal because it does not last for long and sometimes especially during winter then we even encourage encourage them that now at least you need to sleep take some rest sometimes just sit in the sun and it doesn't last uh, for long and sometimes depression can even people can even uh, present with psychotic features especially untreated depression because a lot of people, sometimes they don't know the symptoms. They don't know that now they are depressed. Others do not have access to healthcare facilities, under-resourced communities. That is why sometimes it's very important if we, are, if we are knowledgeable to help such people because they can get psychotic. Then now that is the, it is the severest form now of depression because that's when now we say that now they are hallucinating like seeing things that are not seen and it can be like visual hallucination where the other person may say maybe i'm seeing a snake and you're not seeing that and in reality there's nothing like that but it's because now is their brain there's an imbalance in their brain so now they are psychotic sometimes it's auditory hallucination 
when it's auditory now, they are hearing things. It's voices. Sometimes it can even be persecutory voices and that's very dangerous. So that is why when we assess them, we even asking them now about the kind of voices that they are hearing. Are they soft voices? And we want to know the content of those voices. What are they saying? Because sometimes it can be voices that are saying, kill yourself. And they believe that and they can kill themselves. Sometimes they are so persecutory where they are like, maybe you useless, you are this. And they even get paranoid for no like for no reason when now they are so fearful there's mistrust they don't trust other people because of that paranoia sometimes they think that now you are even the family members they can be conflict because they don't understand what the person is going through they might even say that now you be wishing them remember they are not in touch with reality that is why now they are feeling that way Others, they even, they are delusional. There is that false belief. Others, they can believe that maybe I'm a president. And they believe that is a delusion. Is that false reality? And they are feeling agitated. And most of the time, if patients or clients are psychotic, hospitalization is the best route because there's no way we can have a conversation with a person who've lost contact with reality, the first line now of help that now sometimes you contact the hospital or maybe the GP to facilitate admission or the psychiatrist because now they also need now to get medication to stabilize them. That is when that now when they are stable mentally, we are able to to talk to them that now so that now we get to the core of the problem that now what is going on in their lives because most of the time it's unresolved issues and it's people who are like unable to deal with issues and they are carrying them sometimes it's from childhood and as life goes on you're getting older challenges are getting more and it triggers you and again, there is what we call a, a peripatum depression. Previously, it was known as postnatal depression. Women now who are like pregnant, who've given birth. And most of the time is when like you are too stressed when you are pregnant. It affects you. And after giving the baby, you'll find that now after some days, a person will present with peripatum or postnatal depression. Others can even get psychotic in the process. Others is kind of like that denial where, like they are not aware that they've given, that is the severest form now, where they don't even know that now I've got a baby. And most of the time there is that sense of emptiness. They are feeling empty inside. And it can, it can begin maybe days after birth, or maybe a month. Others, they can resolve that maybe within three months. Others on their own, it get resolved. But sometimes now, that's where now we also now intervene as psychologists, we're intervening as psychiatrists. And especially when now there are feeding issues, then that's where we need to know that now, must the person get medication or not, especially when the person is breastfeeding. And you'll find that now the mother doesn't have cannot establish a bond with the child. Remember now, the person is mentally ill. That is where even social support system now is very important that now we support them. And sometimes they are even feeling inadequate. They feel that now they, can, they are not equipped to take care of the baby. So that's why it's very important. Sometimes other women will even present with what is called pre-menstrual dysphoric disorder like before their periods before they menstruate especially young women we do have like those uh, symptoms where a person will feel moody but here now it's when like it's severe sometimes it can happen even 10 days or five days before menstruation and then now 
they are feeling so moody others cannot function they cannot even go to work they are sleeping others cannot go to school they are experiencing severe cramps and it does sometimes have an impact on their jobs or on their day-to-day -day living impact on their relationships and that is where sometimes even we refer them now for medication because now they also need medical intervention because also in our scope we have to to exclude what we call general medical condition because other people that now will think that now is just depression only to find out that now is also triggered by a physical illness like others there's a problem with the thyroid it's either it's a uh, under secreting where they can even feel depressed or the thyroid is over secreting and then now they become maniac hypomaniac where now they are too happy so that is why sometimes we even have to to exclude that then we refer to the gp others is even vitamin deficiency and then there's that chronic tiredness, loss of interest. So when we're doing now our clinical intake, we do also probe for that, that now is there no underlying medical condition. So if there's a medical condition, then we refer now to the physician to attend to that. So that is why now it's very important that now, also as a woman, to understand yourself, to be aware of what you are going through. If you feel that now this is out of hand, it's very important that now you go for help. And others we say that is sub a syndrome a sub syndromal depression. With sub syndromal depression, it means that now a person does not like meet all the requirements for depression. Maybe it's only about two features. It's not like you are like severely depressed others they can resolve that on their own others they even have to come for 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 talk therapy sometimes it's mild so it's very important now to go for help and understand because it your mental health is very important and sometimes with children it can be what we call disruptive mood a dysregulation we know children are children they are very naughty but here now it's when it is worse like where it's like it's behavioral problem that is is kind of kind of like causing concern even teachers at school parents or other children now are feeling like aggrieved by this particular child there are those emotional outbursts but this emotional outbursts are kind of like they are kind of like beyond the expected level outside those boundaries of normality where you'll find now even at school the child is fighting a lot we know kids do fight we don't have to be labeling them that now this is the diagnosis even now with this it's not to label other people but it's kind of like a mental health awareness that now if people are presenting with this go for help because now you are not trained for that way now you have to label other people that oh this one has got this and that so coping is very important because depression is caused most of the time by things that happened in the past and anxiety it's things that will happen in the future where a person is like what is going to happen so in our treatment we even bring them now to the now what are you doing now we bring them to the present and sometimes to, 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 to have gratitude. What are the things that you have achieved because you feel good? Because when you're depressed, your mind tends to think negatively. So what are your achievements? Others journaling, things that you used to do because the main thing now is to bring that restoration that now a person needs to cope. Self-care is very important. And sometimes we even encourage them to have realistic, achievable goals because you'll feel good about yourself because the main thing is problem management. You get depressed because you cannot manage your problems. That is why we even help you. We don't give you the answers, but we're working with you 
to facilitate that because it's a problem management process. You are at the driving seat of this helping process. But what we do, we create that collaboration. We're giving you the platform, that platform to solve your problems. We're exploring what is possible and what is not possible so the main thing is not to bottle up your emotions because people bottle up their emotions and even sometimes it's unresolved anger anger is a normal emotion as long as you're expressing it also expressing it in a healthy way because if you don't express it properly then it can result into depression so it's very important that you take care of yourself thank you